So it's going. Cool. Okay. Do you want to know what we're doing first, or do you want to tell me what you were thinking of doing, or which way around you want to do this? I can give you a a rundown of why we started the Kinefin community mm -hmm. and what the plans were during the la uh, over Christmas, and why we think the wiki announcement means we need to change our strategy or work together to um, for the benefit of everybody else. So in April last year, um, I'd been working on the Woodley mapping community because I'm interested in lifelong learning. I know the effects of automation and AI are actually coming down the track much faster than most people realize. As somebody that is a software engineer by training and has studied the IT job market for 18 years, I believe that we're not in a position to adapt to the technological change that's going to happen. And one of my hunches is that learning in the open, learning through free online communities is going to be one of the ways, one of the most effective ways for that we learn. And I've worked with a number of groups, but I've found the Wardley mapping one the most interesting to date last year. But uh, given what was emerging at the beginning of last year, the pandemic, what will be the economic consequences of that, I thought I'd shift focus and look at, see if, see if I could repeat the same thing or what's happening with the Wardley mapping community with Kinefin. So I got permission to use the, uh, the trademark and we put together um, a Twitter account. We have a Slack space. There is a, an awesome list or a kind of curated list on GitHub. Uh, we were starting to do interviews, trying to bring in um, more people on that. We um, put together a board, which are in attendance today. And the plan was, was to hold elections in October this year to elect a new board. Um, the announcement about the wiki last week, I th I'm very excited about. I think it's a good thing. And really, we shouldn't try and compete or create opposing um, assets in the community. Really, a wiki is the, probably the first and obvious thing to look at. Uh, I think about it with Simon on Friday as it happens. He mentioned it. So. Yes. Sorry, there's, there's, there's a Friday call with Simon, myself, and others on it every Friday. So. Okay. Uh, I think I've covered everything there. Mike, Tom, is there anything you want to add? I think I'm just doing the learning in the open thing and finding out how useful it is. So, you know, that that's... <laughs> Uh, and, you know, John did ask me, I knew John before this, uh, he asked me if I'd uh, be on the board. But, yeah, I'm, I'm part of loads of groups, and the learning the open thing is uh, the most amazing thing that's happened um, in the past few years. The ability to do it, so that, you know, that, that phrase is a big one for me. Yeah, I would, I would second that. I think, yeah, I'm uh, here for that. That's the, the thing that makes it really useful. And the idea of, yeah, being able to share that way of approaching the world, I think is really valuable. Um, I'm also, I noticed uh, for, from my perspective, I, I, I definitely was uh, in the habit of nicking ideas from the old Cognitive Edge website. So I've, I've been running Future Backwards Workshops, for instance. Not the first one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's what they're there for. Or isn't it like share the ideas um so i noticed that the new website had taken off the how you do it type methods and it sounds like this wiki is resharing some of those techniques uh, trying to help the world to to do it better right 
Yeah, and it's it's not been without controversy within Cognitive Edge, and there is still some controversies about what should be in it and what should not be in it. So I, I actually think our course program should be in the wiki, whereas some people think they should be behind a firewall. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I've always. But I think that's a well, debate in the whole of the online learning world, isn't it? Yeah, well, my, my view is very simple. You should assume that people are going to copy you. So it's more important that people know where it came from in the first place. So if you put things behind, behind firewalls, you guarantee that people will create minor variations and copy them and people may not know, right? But I think it's also an ethical issue. Um, let, let, me, let me give you the big picture, tell you what we, we're currently planning, which is going to, you know, wikis evolve based on participation anyway and then tell you some of the differences with the Wardley map ones, yeah? because we, we need to address them. So there are two or three things which are happening. One is the generic name for what we do. Answer of complexity is a subset of what's called naturalizing sense making. Right? So that the field as a whole is naturalizing sense making. That includes answer of complexity, but it also includes work on knowledge management and on narrative. Yeah? Um, so, it, so one thing which happened is natural. My approach to sense making was recognised by the academic community. So it's now seen as one five, one of five distinct schools of sense making. Yeah, with Veit, Durbin, Klein, um, various IT people as the other four. Right now, that's important because that means we're now going to start get papers and published. So at that point, the field needs better definition. So one of the motivations behind the wiki is to have the concept papers and the definition in open source so the community can contribute to those and so they're completely visible. Yeah. So that, that was that motivation. The second one and the really big one that you may or may not be aware is the European Union in a couple of weeks time will publish the field guide to how, how to manage in crisis and complexity. Yeah, which is, um, let's see what I will do, is I'll share the cover of that in the chat. So that is a joint publication, yeah, of, well, it's actually a joint publication of the European Union and the Canavan Centre. So the brand on this is Canavan Centre, not Cognitive Edge, and it's important you understand that distinction. So Cognitive Edge is the commercial company, Canavan Center is not for profit. So we're methods, ideas, and we run membership for academics, governments, and not for profit companies. So it's a different framework, and that's where I'm focused. Somebody else is managing the commercial side now. Yeah. And we're still sorting some of that split out. It will be a charity or the equivalent within about six months. We're going through the legal stuff that's happening up at the moment. And it will have a board of trustees and all that sort of stuff because I want this stuff to live beyond me. Yeah. Um, and then there's, if you don't know, we have a group of staff within the centre who are collectively known as the Coven because there used to be three 29 year old women. So they got called the Coven with the reference to Macbeth. And now there are seven 29 year old to 32 year old women and they like being called the coven and God help anybody who gets in their way, including me. So it's from my point of view, it's a really interesting exercise in self-management and self-organization. Yeah. Um, and that's actually working quite well because they largely manage their own tasks and they're building the capability. So that, that takes it forward. Yeah. Um, because we're much broader than a single method, which is what working mapping is. Um, there's somewhere in the region of 250 to 300 methods, about 50 assemblies. Yeah, th this is a significant body, yeah? So either way, so the EU handbook is coming out. Um, and the key point about that is it is in effect a significant validation of the approach. So it is the Canavan framework. It actually says inspired by the Canavan framework. It's got Canavan methods in it. It's a four-step process. Yeah. Yeah. Assess, adapt, exact, transcend. It actually has SenseMaker in it. So it has the tools in it as well. Right. And it got pushed through EU approval as a book in 48 hours. Yeah. Which is 
pretty much without precedent. Normally that takes about two months. So I'm scrambling at the moment, and that's the other reason to throw some of this stuff into the wiki fast, is there's a whole body of stuff we have to get around that. It's not just a couple of webinars about here's the field book, but we need to be that, we need to get all the methods fully documented. We need to actually build a body of practitioners who can implement them. All right, and one of the motivations for me on the wiki is it allows us to measure who gets it and who doesn't. Because if you don't contribute to the wiki, you're obviously not a member of the community. If every time you contribute, you get reverted, it's fairly obvious you don't understand it. I, I speak as a well-established wiki warrior at this point, all right? And if you go on and check my ID on Wikipedia, you'll see I, my role is a reverter, right? That's what I do. Uh, we, we've already got gnomes and we've got content creation, but that's there. So we want, you know, that, that is really significant and that is in open source. So the, the field guide is open source. Anybody can download it for free. And that was the other driver to get the wiki out. So there's a place to go to get more detail and find, find people and so on. Right. So that, those are all significant in terms of the development. Right. Um, and we've had a wiki in background for some time, but the decision to make it open source was the big change. So we're also putting in that thing, as well as methods, we're putting the assemblies, we're putting principles, metaphors, um, quotations, which are useful. So we're trying to make it a big sort of sales support thing as well. So annotated list of the articles, list of videos. So basically it's anybody any can think of which will help people. And there's still controversy, but I want to put the user guides for SenseMaker into it. That's one of the fights internally going on at the moment, because I think that would be better in public. Yeah. Um, but I have to work on a consensus basis. Yeah. So that's the golden plan. I mean, I can show it you if you want. Yeah. Um, we see the way this happens is a community will emerge. I think the difference is that to some extent, I am going to provide some constraint on it because as the field grows, we have to grow it coherently. So this stuff is not cybernetics. Yeah, it's, it's not psychodynamics. Yeah, it's not that we can't work with people from those backgrounds, but we need to make sure that people understand what's different and what's similar and what's coherent. So that's part of the, the process, yeah? But just as if you look what I've done on Kinevin, I don't often pounce on people if they get it wrong. The community generally does that for me. And I've been doing that for about 20 years now is it's more important to let people use it and then just say, have you thought about this than to say that's not the true version and jump on them. So it's that same sort of technique. But for example, we had a big problem in the, and the other reason motivation on this is people were copying the methods and then copying the copies and then copying the copies of the copies. And the ethical um, controls, for example, on ritual descent had disappeared after three copies um, to the point where we had a clear case of abuse in one facilitation session. So the other goal here is to have a single point of origin, i.e. Any, anybody has access to this. If anybody creates training, everybody knows they can go to the wiki and see what the method actually is, yeah? Um, and the other reason to, we use Wikimedia um, because everybody's familiar with Wikipedia, so the training comes across, yeah? But it's also the big feature for me, that is the talk page. So it's the ability to have conversations and resolve things, yeah, as a thread in its own right. So right. sort of that's in public. kind of like, yeah. And in public and completely traceable. I think that that's the issue. This is complete transparency. And, you know, this is, I say it's going to be a balancing act. I know if I get too precious about this, nobody will participate. Mm -hmm. But if I don't provide some loose constraints, then the thing will just end up with something homogenized, right? The other plan is, as soon as this is out, is to publish a book. Yeah, so there needs to be something other than liberating structures out there. So it's not that we don't like liberating structures. They've got a lot of our methods in liberating structures which they sometimes acknowledge and they sometimes get right. Um, but I'm more interested in a body of methods which are coherent in terms of their underlying concepts. 
So not just a collection of things which might be useful, but the whole thing is meant to hang together. Yeah. And the other thing, and this is, you know, Simon said to me the other day, he said, well, I know Kate because I get paid a salary so I can do what I want. Yeah, cognitive edge in the Kinevin Centre is entirely dependent on revenue, so nobody gives us grants. But for monetization of this, I mean, the, the way you monetize open source, and I'm being completely transparent here, is you create artifacts, yeah, and you and you control access. So if people want want me, they'll have to come through the company, yeah. But we also, and we're just doing this with SenseMaker, so we've gone down an open API route on SenseMaker. Similar principle because it would allow people to develop software around the core. The similar concept here is if people want to develop artifacts within this framework and they want us to promote them, well, we're going to create a marketplace for that. Yeah. And, and that's the way we'll, you know, it's lots of little amounts of money and after rather than big amounts. And yeah. Um, yeah, that that will keep the whole thing funded is the principle. Yeah. So that's kind of like roughly where we are. Yeah. You um, the, say the big one is the EU handbook. We also may get a massive contract for peace and conflict resolution in the States. If that happens, that will change everything. We'll have to mass scramble on that. But yeah, those, those are never more than 10% chance. Yeah, the States would definitely do with some conflict resolution. <laughs> it's well, that's the example. So, I mean, one of the things I've got to do this afternoon is put up the assembly for that in the wiki. So I'm just dumping things from the blog in it. And, and the whole point about a wiki is you can just get things in and then people can refine it. Yeah. It sounds like an opportunity. It's an opportunity for learning in the open, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, totally. That's yeah. exactly what that is, isn't it? And it's um I've actually written down trial by wiki, which I think might, <laughs> um it, well, so the other big suggested. I'm putting together at the moment is a composite body of our methods which are associated with Agile. Right. So the pre-scrum methods are going in there. Um, and that sort of thing. And also start, I'm going to start in the wiki as sort of working, and this is a learning experience, is can we use Kinevin to actually link and connect methods from multiple sources? I, you can define a method in terms of its input output. This is me going back to my old days, mm -hmm. which means actually you don't have to have a framework like say, you can basically assemble different methods in combinations because you've got a framework structure around what you use and when. So that, that's the other thing, yeah, which we can start to develop. And again, I really want that to take place collaboratively in the open, which is actually what I did with the DSDM method when we set that up, what, 20, 30 years ago? Yeah, we moved that, we moved that into a non-competitive body straight away. We didn't have it as a, and it's now become a separate company and it's now business agility. So I think it's gone gone the route of all agile on that. But I'd really like to develop some communities like the peace and conflict community. We've got a massive NHS presence at the moment. Yeah, so the NHS programs on leadership we're putting together at the moment. So those will go in the wiki as well. Right, so that the community can get involved and deal with them. So that's the plan. This is me playing legacy if you haven't realized it. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, Dave, that you could show us a demonstration well, before you do, before you do that, um, I'm going to come at this from a obviously the, what I'm my uh, agenda is is lifelong learning. So mm -hmm. what what can the community do today to start thinking about or make a contribution to this? One thing that springs to mind with uh, Wikimedia is localization. So translating what's already there into yeah. different languages. The other thing is, um, the what should we do about Slack? Should we try and encourage uh, the community to move to Wikipedia for discussions so they are in the open and actually think about closing down Slack? And then the last thing is you mentioned earlier, should we? try and think about how can we establish or encourage special interest groups that you referred mm -hmm. to? How can that happen in on Wikimedia? Yeah, and I think there's, I mean, as far as we're concerned, it's open from next week, so anybody can get an ID. And one of the things I'm particularly keen on is some people who are technically competent at Wikimedia 
because there's a whole bunch of features we haven't got like edit bars and files can't load and things like that. So yeah, there's, there's some technical stuff to do here. And you know the way Wikimedia works, you end up with admins and people like that. So all, all of that's in there, right? So yeah, I'm at, but I, I think when my view is generally is we're gonna keep the um, internal cognitive edge slack because it does a different type of conversation. So I, I think, you know, the, it, and you, the, you can have those as private conversations. Um, I say, you, you know, there are still some issues. So let me have you show you, then you probably see what I'm thinking about. So, okay, so this is the main page. Uh, that logo is gonna change over to Kenevin Center. So we, we want the not-for-profit branding on this, yeah? All the way through as a public good. And we may start to try and get some grants in as well. So just to give you an idea of the range, so this is, um, we're currently planning to produce an ebook from the Kenevin Center every quarter. Yeah, so this is the article on that. And as you can see, it basically says, we've got one set up. We've got these that we're thinking about, yeah? Uh, the one which is set up, you know, Emma's the editor. These are the current plans for the chapters. These are the names we're thinking of, yeah? So those will be developed as chapter descriptions. It will move around and then people will be commissioned, yeah, and produce, right? So again, that's, that's not normally. We've then got within that, so then we got methods, That, which are roughly being grouped. There's a lot more to go in here yet, yeah? Yeah, and as you can see, some aren't written yet. I've got to transfer those across, yeah? They're in various forms. That's actually fully written up, um, but it hasn't been brought across yet, yeah? I'm just noticing so, ritual humiliation. I've not seen that one before. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, that's cool, all right? Um, <laughs> but actually, that's, that's in there as a shell, so... I, it, it was, it got picked up from the Canavian book from Viv's article. It's something I did for the first time in, in Northern Australia. So we had a problem. In, so we did this in Canada, right? Sorry, in New Zealand. And so we, we needed to make sure that the group didn't come to conclusions too early. So I basically said anybody who at any stage says, this is what's happening or I know what we should do has to wear an Australian rugby jersey. And if they can't find anybody else making the same mistake, their picture gets taken with it. And that, that's an example. That is a good complex facilitation technique. We made sure that one of our team fell for it early on. I've actually got a Kiwi who doesn't like rugby, so he didn't see what the problem was. So, you know, everybody else did, right? Mm -hmm. But again, that, that, that's just noted, all right? But for the moment, that's, that's fairly weak, all right? In terms of needs to be expanded. Yeah. Whereas something like um, a, let's find it, future backwards, if anything needs pruning at the moment. Yeah, so it's got preparation, it's got the tasks with comments on it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And kind of like the thing I send to people immediately is I put up some provisional templates here. Right? But we kind of like that's where there needs to be the agreement quite quickly yeah, as to what's in those, right? Because once that's done, people can cut and paste that yep. um, quite easily, right? Um, Each of these pages has a talk page about the page where got it changes. And what I've done is I've created articles. So this is a group. So assemblies, these are combinations of methods and principles. Yeah, yeah. So from that, I can link into complex facilitation. Yeah, this really needs some work on it, but I just slapped all the principles from a blog in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing is if I blog about a method, I'm just putting it in the wiki and then tidying it up when I've got time or, or letting somebody else do it. All right. So those are assemblies. There's a list of methods so that people can see what it is. Yeah. Um, Framework cards, so I've, this is a big thing I want people to work on. Mm -hmm. All right, so the idea here is I'll, I'll write a one paragraph description of each term and then we're gonna encourage people to create the language groups around that, yeah? yeah and again, yeah. that's the sort of thing a wiki does really well, right? 
And I think you're right to say if somebody wants to localize it and create the German version or the French version, yes, we're going to encourage that. Yeah. Um, that's all good news, right? Um, I'm rather taking a sort of assumptive close here and putting these things up. Um, this is something I started to put up. So that's supporting articles. Yeah. Mm. Um, actually, I need to, I've got too many things here. So this is starting to put up support material. So what's the difference between sense maker and other research methods? We need something here. And what's the difference between anthro complexity and cybernetics? So those questions get here. As you can see, I slammed all the publications up. All right. So rather than hold those private, and what we're encouraging people on their talk page to do is to create the CV, create the YouTube links, and so on. So actually, the talk, the you know, the user pages become a community item as well. So what we're saying is, if you if, for example, you have a case study about something you did, yeah, um, then basically you basically put it up, right? So here we've got some, this is a really interesting one. If you haven't seen it, that was published in Nature. Yeah, yeah which is quite prestigious, yeah? Um, but here you've got, you know, write a case study, put it here, yeah? Uh, this is the case template. And this is classic wiki stuff, all right? You just keep writing something. You only write it once. Yeah, you keep the references going, yeah? Um, but it, also, it also has the um, community element to it of who's in the community, what they do, actually yeah. they've done, the things that they've done. And with all this behind it, I mean, it's just, um, yeah, there's no need for a, a GitHub page, I don't think, John. <laughs> you know, of, of, yeah, it's the collection of stuff because this is. If you look yeah. at the way Wikipedia works, which I think is, I think it's really important. I mean, this is my watch list, all right? Mm. So I've got 1,500 pages on it. I pruned a thousand off the other day. Um, it only takes me about 15 minutes to scan this in the morning. Yeah. Because you get to know which editors, if they've changed something you can trust. Yeah, you don't need to worry about it. Whereas other editors or new editors, yeah, you jump on. I think the one principle I put in place on this, which I think is important, is I've said, and, and on this side on Wikipedia, I'm one of the group of Wikipedia editors who thinks an anonymity should be banned. You, you shouldn't be allowed to have an anonymous account because we deal with so much bloody vandalism. So at the moment, I'm about to put this up. I'm going to put a Creative Commons license up, and it's a share and share alike and attribution license. Yeah, so the, that, that's good, right? Um, code of conduct needs to start to work on, but I'm actually putting this up. Anonymity is not permitted. Yeah. yeah. Hey, a couple of things that I believe Wikipedia has in place that helps it. Um, it's got a really strong frame on what Wikipedia is for and what it's not for, you know. Mm. It's got uh, ideas of, you know, what's notable, you know, what what is for Wikipedia and what's maybe for your own personal blog, and it's got a lot of things on standard of evidence, you know, what, what we what we consider to be the truth. Is there going to be a similar kind of uh, thing here for those things? Yeah, that's what I'm working on that at the moment. So, if, if, But if you look at, I mean, what, one of the things you teach people to do is this. So I'm where is it? Sorry, as you can see, uh, no, it's the wrong wiki. Sorry, I, I need the real Wikipedia. Tell you how sad I am. Wiki Wikipedia watch list is my default option on Safari. It just comes up. So if I look at my own contributions on this, well, it's just fun, all right? It's a massive game. I, mean, I told my son off because he was playing too much time on computer games, and I, war I gave him a one-week warning to reduce it, and the bastard trapped my Wikipedia edits and proved <laughs> I was spending more time than he was. So at the moment, I'm developing this, for example. So a group of people tried to get an article up for Nora Bateson, but they got no idea how Wikipedia works. So they use primary sources, so they got beaten up all the time. Yeah, so I put this I put this up for them yesterday and said you, you need to get third party citations here. Yeah. 
exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because we're happy with that. So I think there is that. It's a little bit different because this is, I mean, primary sources are okay for a methods wiki, yeah? Because it's not seeking to be an encyclopedia. Um, but I think the the rules do apply. So if you, so for example, on the, um, so say what we got here is, um, yeah. So this is what the, you know, the main, our field is this, we have these separate fields, yeah? Yeah. These are the methods associated, but we draw on other bodies of theory. So that is probably subject to reliable sources. Yeah, you have to cite what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. And that, um, if you like, if, if you're going to contribute and learn Kinevin in the open, I don't know well how many people will need upskilling on, yeah, the way that works. You know, because like you can wade into Wikipedia and you don't know how it works. And... Yeah, but then you get beaten up. I mean, I still remember the first week I edited it because it, it's a great example of a complex adaptive system because it's managed by enabling constraints. It's behavior, not content. So here we will adjudicate content, but on Wikipedia, nobody will. And I, st I still remember this guy, I, I looked at the knowledge management article, corrected stuff about myself, and this guy reverted it. So I changed it back. And he said, you obviously don't understand Dave Snowden's work please stop bullying me. And it was like, you know, what? <laughs> um, and I eventually found out, I mean, the trouble is I then got sarcastic in my own manner and wrote a blog post about some spotty little teenager called Clint. Turned out to be a very senior professor in a Scottish university and his students found it and it went all over the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, so that was going to take, I think people learn, pe people learn by making mistakes and being corrected. Yeah, that, that's how you learn Wikipedia, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm probably trying to rescue and, people and they don't need it. They can make their own mistakes. Yeah, and I put this up this morning, for example, just very quickly when I was demonstrated it. Yeah? Yeah. So I've got to put, you know, there are tests for coherence. So this was from the blog. So again, what I'm focused on at the moment is just getting stuff in there on the basis that actually tidying up articles is a good way to learn something. Mm. Yeah, um, it's a lot better for somebody else to tidy up something I've written than for me to tidy it up. Yeah? Well, that was, that was one of the drivers. You know, always look at this page every morning, yeah, and see what's going on. Yeah. So that's where we are, right? So I, I want to move more and more stuff into this. I want our training courses in it on the basis if somebody then copies them, well, everybody will know they've been copied because it's already in the public domain. Yeah. I think that, that's the point I'm having difficulty getting across to people. That the, one, the way you claim ownership is to make sure everybody knows you created it, not to hide it. Yeah, I don't believe Dave Snowden when he says, uh, Dave Snowden, Simon Wardley, and I couldn't think of a name, so I just used my own. Nah, they planned that. Everyone knows it's his. <laughs> I, mean, I, it, I think names are fast. I mean, yeah, Kinevin was named simply because I was having a fight with Nanaka and I, I couldn't cope with Japanese words with mystical significance, so I found a Welsh one. But then it kind of like worked out, all right? It's called the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. You know? um, but as I say, I think, yeah, from my point of view, I think where we are now is what COVID has done and what the EU handbook is a catalyst for is to make this approach to sense making and complexity respectable and i don't want and I, I think it's as big as systems thinking and that can't be done by one person or one company it has to be done by a wider community within some bounds yeah mm -hmm. and so now's the time to trigger that the other thing i'm desperate to find to be honest at the moment is strategy consultants because you know agile consultants and organizational change consultants who understand kinevin uh, far more difficult to train in strategy than it is to train, train a strategy consultant in the EU handbook method. Yeah. Because corporate strategy is so much, I mean, I was in it for 15 years of my life, all right? It's brutal and it's political and it's got bugger all to do with evidence. 
Yeah, yep, I mean, if up. you don't understand that, you're not going to get anywhere, right? This is kind of like 101 stuff. How to trigger biased people into doing what you want them to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the other thing, if you haven't noticed it, when I, I hit the blog heavily in November, which is when I finished the handbook, is I'm actually laying out as much of the material as I can on the blog to move across here. But that's also linked within the book. Yeah. So there's three books we're working on. So you've had no books for 25 years. You're now going to have two within six months and two more after that. So mm. I mean, I I will need to, I always I need to go to sleep when I've had a big blog of information. But if had this existed in early this year, John, I don't think the need for the community that we've created would be. No, actually, it was, it was actually quite important you did it. You gave me the ammunition I needed. Oh, yes, it, it's worked out well. But how, I said, look, guys, all right, yeah, we, we've got to put this in open source because otherwise other people are going to be doing it. It's all over the place, yeah? Yeah, totally. But um, and, you know, we, we've, we've also had this really bitter legal experience for the past two years with somebody who basically stole our stuff. It's cost us 350000 all right? And I now know that you can't defend IP anyway unless you're a large corporate. And mm. patents aren't worth the paper they're written on. So I'm now into a publish fast, make it visible, just move faster. Yeah, and make it easier for people to use your stuff. Yeah, than to create copies, I think is the principle. But I say, I think this community is critical. So, you know, community of practice around agile, around organizational change. That's where I think the assemblies come in. So you start to describe an assembly. This is the collective approach to organizational change. It links to all the methods. Yeah. And it works that way. So that's the plan. This is amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, wow. Okay. Um, I mean, given the environment we're in of the internet, things about, you know, things being copied at will and the speed of communication, um, having your output in this format, as in it's there, it's open, it's free. This is the, this is where everything comes from. This, this feels like the, the way to work isn't it because otherwise yeah people copy four or five copies down the road yeah. it has no resemblance to the original and you get blamed for it that's what i was finding people are phoning up and saying that this this stuff you sell us is crap well what, show me what it is well he didn't do that in fact yeah the ritual descent was appalling they, they actually beat up a young female black person online um and said that was ritual descent now it was well meaning all right it's just that the method had got corrupted and the controls had been removed. Yeah. Yeah. I found, um, I found we've now it. actually changed that method to say, do not do it virtually. Yeah. I found that you can't be, ritualize it. Yeah. The, the safeties are often, they're the least fun things, so they get lost first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, as a quick reminder, Dave, when will this go live and the Kenefin Center, is there anything that they want access to that we already have in the community for announcements? For example, the Twitter account probably would be useful to uh, broadcast different sections as they go live. I think, so. I think keep the Slack thing up. Um, I hate to tell you, but Kenefin Community and Anthro Complexity are all registered sites for Cognitive Edge already. We grabbed those years ago. Um, Kenefin.community is available. Is it still? Yeah. Okay. And anthrocomplex.org is available too. That's why I mm. <laughs> suggested them. Okay, I'm, I may not have covered those off on GoDaddy, but either way, I'm, I'm relaxed about it anyway. All right. I mean, this is under kenefin.net at the moment. It may move over to kenefin.io. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I mean, what I can do is get you guys IDs. Um, I've got people trying to look at how people can just register like they do for Wikipedia. At the moment, it doesn't allow that. And the toolbars aren't there. So there's bits and pieces. And we really need some good techies on it to set up a more friendly environment. But my view is if it's open space, people will put that in. Whereas yeah. if it's private, yeah. they won't. Yeah, get the techies to have a go at it and they'll fix the problems. They just Yeah, that's, that's, that's Wikipedia do. works, yeah? It's yeah. like that's what they enjoy doing. I've already got my first wiki gnome, all right? 
she's oh my god this is wonderful i can correct all your references in your grammar please let me at it and it's like oh <laughs> you don't mind do you no i don't I don't mind i'm openly welcome I'm not, I'm not somebody who blogs. Just one last question. Um, I'm not a blogger, I should say. Um, I'm quite interested, though, in, in higher bandwidth communication, so video and whatever comes after that. But people do like to write about their experiences rather than mm. to say, this is my framework, this is my um, innovation uh, it's kind of, I used Kinef in this is what happened, this is what I learned. Is there a section on the wiki where people could actually say, can I share my link to my blog yeah. post? And then for well, other two men ways. One is cases, all right? So you write up a case. All right. The other is you put them on here. If, you, if you're making interesting edits and interesting comments, people will follow it through and They'll find your blog. You know, I got some of my videos up there. Oh, use a pet. I see. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, the great thing about the user page is it encourages it, people will come to your user page. I mean, what I'd like as well is, I mean, if we look at the main Wikipedia, right? Um, part of the way you make this fun, all right? And I'm, I'm showing my deep inner child at this point. Yeah. Um, and I'm picking the wrong one. Come on. Is you can actually get quite clever on the page, right? So, I mean, I've got a conflict of interest declaration. There was there are two articles which involve me. So in the Wikipedia rules, I have to declare on the page and declare on my user page that I'm linked to those. Yeah, and have to request edits, right? Um, there's some bar says, these are the ones I love. Every time I find one that I, I fancy, I grab it. And people at Peter Techies keep creating these and, and like you just go in and edit and grab the one because you like it too much, right? But it's, I think all of this is part of creating a community. So I say this, I've got three friends who are extreme right-wing Republicans in the States because I monitor right-wing articles. But these guys play by the rules so we can work together. Yeah, and in fact, you know, the, the famous one on Wikipedia, if you don't know it, is the Dairy Compromise because that's a massive Catholic Protestant vice. Yeah, Catholics call it Dairy... Protestants call it Londonderry. Well, wonderful Wikipedia, and only somebody British could have proposed this, right? Is it's Derry for the city, London Derry for the county. And that just appealed to people, and now everybody will reinforce it. So it's it's that ability to work with people you don't agree with because you've got the basic behavioral constraints, yeah? Mm, so the way yeah. it works. So one of the things that Ward Cunningham I, this is me paraphrasing, I may not totally understand it, but I think why Wikipedia was so successful, and incidentally, it was created for uh, software developers to uh, collaborate with, but um, uh, from memory, what he said is you can start to flesh out an article, as you've demonstrated before, but you can also include links that go to shell pages so if you yeah. if you if you you need to reference a term, but you don't actually fully understand what that term means, so you put it. And I've done a lot of that because then somebody will pick it up and develop that article. So you you're actively encouraging people to do that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you look at one of the ones I've been editing, I've put that in. Like, yeah. So for example, on the training course, and this may get taken down to be, you know, I still think they're wrong on that, but I've agreed if. Commercial want to take their training programs down. I'll take it down. I'll just put the center ones up. Yeah. Mm. Um, but one of the things I did there is they talked about a learning community. Um, what does it say? Uh, training. So I took the Canavian Base Camp, put it here, made some changes. All right. But for example, 
they said learning lines. I've got no idea what they are. So I just created that. It's red. Yeah. And it's kind of like one of the things you do on Wikipedia. If you find something red and you know something about it, go on and put something up and explain it. Yeah. I mean, I think the key golden rule, it's the thing I used to fire for, five people for in software development. I didn't believe that anybody would ever refactor. Is in all of my experience, everybody said they would, but they didn't. So it was a very simple rule. If it's going to be used more than once, you write it once and you put it in a library. Yeah, and there's a three star, and it was a three star, I fired people over that because otherwise you get unmaintainable code. And it's the same sort of principle here is you write it once. Yeah. You might summarize it, but then you link to the article summarized. That's again a Wikipedia convention. But the basic rule is, and I'm saying this to people, go and look at Wikipedia and look at their learning instructions, and we're more or less following that. Yeah, if you want guidance, and that was the other reason for choosing w w Media Wiki, is there's the whole of Wikipedia for people to learn from. I can imagine there'll be a lot of people uh, in a week or so going and doing that. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I love Wikipedia. We're, we're, it, it's like I love blogging. Yeah, it's it suits my sort of mind. I work in fragments. I think about something. I want to deal with it. I want to come back to it. It's nice, all right. Other people want to write full blown papers, but there's a role for that. I say there's a huge amount of tidying up to do here, and people can earn a huge amount of kudos in the community by being the people who tidy things up, simplify the language, yeah, yeah. and so on. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's it, it's uh, there's a lot of. I'm sure there's a word for this. The effects of um, just being useful and being around things that will. People, yeah, and actually, that, those are the people who get most. I mean, I I doubt if I'd ever get voted in admin on Wikipedia because, you know, the Brexit Party people help me, hate me. All of the BNP hate me, and all of the English nationalists and unionist guys hate me because I I've only been I've only lost the reversion battle I think twice in twenty years of editing. I'm quite good at this. Yeah. Um, and I've got a collection of editors I've contributed to getting permanently banned. It's like you put stickers on the side of a fighter pilot in the Second World War. Um, so when I wrote but, down trial by wiki, I wasn't actually far wrong. Yeah, well, it is. But what actually happens is the people who everybody respects are the people who go around and get the detail right and get the technical stuff right and reformat stuff and pick on bad references. They become hugely valuable assets in the community. Mm. Yeah. So uh, again, it, this is going to be Creative Commons. So at some mm -hmm. point you would be able to do a complete download to perform uh, natural language processing on it if yeah. you wish to do that. So in, I hope this is a, a valid question. And what I'm trying to do is tease out the urgency or the direction of travel that needs to happen. But by the beginning of September, what would you have liked what would you like to see on, on here? I'd like a active community of at least 30 to 40 people and a less active community of several hundred. Yeah. And I think that would actually, that's kind of like the absorption rate. I'd like anything which we name as a method, at least up there in some form, if it's not tidy. Yeah, the main assemblies, the user pages up, and um, things like these supporting materials. Yeah, yeah, building that is important. Yeah, that that sort of questions you get asked. I'm going to put some sales stuff up there as well. How do you sell Kinevin? Where people can contribute examples and cases. Yeah? So that that's my goal on this. Yeah. The other thing we're doing on this, by the way, is we, we brought in an industrial designer full time and she's working on creating facilitation kits so people can buy kits with the methods on them and things like that. Yeah. yeah. And then there's posters and stuff like that we're producing. So the idea is to produce a lot of artifacts around this. That's Sue. Yeah. That's Sue. No, that's Nia. Wow. No, Sue's an artist in residence. Nia is an industrial designer. Okay, any other questions, Mike, Tom? 
It seems to have legacy written all over it. That's not a question, is it? <laughs> Sorry. No, it's deliberate. And what, what, you know, what I want is, I, I don't want one person saying, I'm now taking over from Dave because Dave's finally had the heart attack or has decided to retire. Yeah, that, that's not a legacy for something like this. The legacy for something like this is it's picked up, it's got variations. I'd be fascinated to see before I die two or three different schools of thought around Ken Evan emerging. Because that way you know you're getting it. That, that's actually quite good when that happens, provided they're not incoherent. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to have a schism. Otherwise, you haven't really got a thing. Well, no, that's a Protestant problem, all right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like you, you, you need to have some things which are near heresies, all right, which is different. You don't have to have schisms, all right? So what I can do, guys, if you want, is get you, is ask Michael to set you up with user IDs on this so you can start to look at it and play with it. Oh, yeah. yes, please. That'd be really cool. So if you know any super techies who get media wikis or whatever, yeah, could really do with the input of that. In fact, they'd even pay somebody for a week if there's somebody who is really technically competent who fancies some work. Can't really afford much more than that at the moment, but. We, we need to get, like, I haven't got the toolbars up and we can't load files and we need little shortcuts, all those sort of things, yeah? Mm. So definitely looking for somebody who can do that. And to be honest, somebody who gets the technical environment can do that in seconds. Technically, I can probably do it by struggling through the help pages, but not well. And I don't want my software support team working on this. They've got other things to focus on. Is there a possibility of being able to list the issues that you have loosely on a page somewhere? Yeah, what, what I can do is I can put, um, it's not a bad idea actually. Yeah, create a list of to-dos and you delete them when you've done them. Yeah, so um, Get the right brackets. Right. So I'll start to put stuff in that, and anybody else can add to it. That's what I've, I've been trained all our staff on it, and they just don't get the ease with which you do this. You don't send emails out anymore, and you don't create Google Docs with multiple track changes on it. I mean, the, the, the most important rule on Wikipedia is WPBRD, if you know that one. Okay, it's, but it's, it's be bold, if you reverted, discuss. Yeah, so don't ask permission. Just go and make the change. If somebody reverts you, don't fight them. Yeah, go and discuss. And there's three. There's a three revert rule. If you revert three times, you're going to get blocked. Blocked for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. You need Dave. You need to do like a 15 minute introduction to Wikipedia, where you guide people around what they need to do that's, that's what i've been doing and i am going to set up some public sessions on this in a week's time yeah, yeah. so oh. i've been i've been doing it with their own staff so the idea is set up public sessions you know that this is how i edit wikipedia this is what the media media wiki is about yeah oh, and by the way why don't you go on to the style guide and add things that you've learned from this that you think everybody else should use yeah yeah these are the pages so, you know, keep an eye on the revert reverts pages you know this what to do on talk pages, all that. Yeah, yeah. And check it every day, but then you can see where, where I've decided uh, I can't let this go, I've got to step in, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that's all of the there, right? So, you know, current issues, whatever. Um, what I've also done is to, I'll, I'll build this bit up a bit, you know, because I need to get the permissions in there. Yeah. Mm. I've got a load of thoughts, but I'll need to sleep on them to work out which ones are important and which ones are not. Okay, well, we're continuing to work on this. I'll get your ID set up so you can go in and have a look at it. Yeah. Add to that list, think about it. All right. We'll open it up more broadly in a couple of weeks' time. 
but I just want to get the templates and the rough structure and the guides all worked out. Yeah, so adding some more editors to help do that is good news, right? But as I say, I think the Slack groups worked, right? And yeah, I've encouraged our people to join it and refer people to it. I don't always agree what's in it. I think it sometimes promotes things I disagree with, but actually that's part of the fun because I can always use the blog if I want to, right? So I'm, I'm quite relaxed about that. Yeah. That's good. But I think Slack provides a different function from a wiki. Agreed. Yeah. So that's clarified that. I think it's, I also think that learning in the open, open, also you need the safe space sometimes. And the full internet is perhaps too much for some people. And this exposes you. I mean, if, if you get things consistent, I mean, if, if somebody puts something in you, which I think is completely wrong, I'm going to revert them politely and then talk with them and then revert them again. And then I'm going to start to get nasty. All right. Because there's only so much any and but you'd only do that if the community backed you so yeah this it was quite interesting good days an interesting editor on wikipedia it was a right bloody pain on the british Isles articles and eventually irritated the whole community so we banned him for a year and it, wikipedia was his whole life and i kind of like knew that so I, I sent him an email and said look if you'd agree to these terms I'll nominate you to be allowed back in. And being as I was one of the people who got you banned, it would be people will pay attention. And we did that. Yeah, and he's actually been reasonably well behaved since. I have to every now and then just remind him, right? Uh, when he wants to call Wales a constituent country rather than the country, which is one of my bet noirs. Yeah. Um, we actually got the European Commission to designate Wales as a country as a result of a Wikipedia fight is we needed a third party reference. So we contacted the head of Plaid Cymru. They use political lobbying in Brussels and Wales was put as a country on a, on a European Union article and it was all over. Yeah. And you're looking for strategy consultants for how to get things done. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the EU handbook, which will be out shortly, oh, that is a major step because it basically, it is how to manage in complexity and crisis. It has four stages, yeah? Yeah. Assess, adapt, exact, transcend. It has multiple stages within that. It's been professionally designed by the EU design team. Yeah, so it's it's a good document. It's a field book. I mean, that's that's what we've needed for a long time. Is that going to be a PDF or a paper, a printed book too? It's going to be both. So, it's, so you're going to be able to go on to it's it's. We thought at one stage because we wanted it to be a book. But the trouble is books have to go through a two-month academic review, which would have killed it. Hmm. So they were talking about a paper, but then I explained to the design team how you do politics. You get your boss's boss to phone up the guy in charge of publications and ask what he can do to help get the thing through the process, which means everybody knows he wants it. So 48 hours later, the book was approved as a special measure. Yeah. So now we got one set of amendments to do this week, you know, the final proofing. Then I think it just gets loaded and put up and they print off 500 copies, but it will be an ebook. Okay. Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to get ready for that, and that's why I may do some of this in the wiki, is we need to have a whole body of things ready to go with that. Like this is a webinar to understand what it means. Yeah, this is how you build a human sensor network. This is how you actually do lessons learned. So all of those methods actually need to be more formalized together with offerings for companies and governments to buy. Right? And we're not big enough to do that. In fact, what we need, to, that's why one of the reasons I would have loved to have the wiki a year ago, because then I'd know who we could trust to do that. Yeah, so now this is a sort of fast way of getting that on board. Wonderful. We've just gone past four o'clock. Yes. Uh, Homeschooling calls. And, you know, okay, so I'll get your IDs. You'll play with it, right? I've put that list of issues up, so feel free to add to that. Yeah. Wonderful. Feel free to play with the templates and stuff like that. You know, whatever. I mean, that's what a wiki is. Assume I'm monitoring it every morning anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And by the way, guys, we need to thank you for setting up that Canavan community, but that, I think that was actually quite important. It, it, it made a market statement as well. 
John, not playing John. John, John. yeah. John. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, also, it also allowed me internally to say this is the sort of thing we want to happen. Yeah, so that was useful. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Have a good okay. everyone. Okay, cheers, guys. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. Bye.